All right, so section 2.2, part A, um, solving inequalities. So whenever we solve inequalities, uh, you always have to, well, not always, but usually you're going to solve the problem and then you're going to graph what it looks like, okay? And we're not going to be doing the two-dimensional graphs where um, there's a x and a y-axis. It's just a number line, okay? Um, but there's a couple things I have to go over with you guys before I do any of the solving portion. I have to introduce certain things to you guys. So uh, first off, there's two ways um, that you're going to be seeing inequalities. Okay, you can either see like the less than or greater than symbols, or you'll see the less than or equal to and the greater than or equal to symbols. Okay, um, when it comes to those symbols, uh, and when it comes to you having to graph, okay, these symbols are going to require you to put a solid dot, I'm sorry, not solid, empty dot, when you graph them. Okay, so we'll get to that right now, to, to the graphs. But you're going to be uh, doing a, an empty dot when you graph them, and then you'll draw lines from there, okay? Now, whenever you see less than or equal to and greater than or equal to, these will result in solid dots, okay? So those are going to be the, the darkened dot for us. So remember that. And then there's another thing you guys have to know about inequalities. So I'm going to write, I'm going to write that down over here to the side with inequalities um, so with inequalities if you multiply or divide by a negative number on both sides of the inequality, so if you multiply or divide by a negative number on both sides of the inequality, you must flip the inequality. And I'll show you a couple little examples like this. So let me just kind of highlight words that should be something that you remember. So multiply or divide both sides, flip it. Okay? Those are going to be my, my kind of like the little trigger words to kind of hopefully remind you. Okay? But if you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a pot, uh, um, by a negative number, um, actually I should probably highlight that too. I'll change the color because that's the main thing right here. A negative number. Okay, so if you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, then you have to flip the inequality. That's the only part that you have to remember because other than that, you do everything else the way you would normally do a normal solving problem, right, with an equal sign. You just kind of go through, add, subtract, multiply, divide, um, and do everything that you're supposed to do uh, that you're used to. But in this case, since we're doing inequalities, if there's negative numbers that you're multiplying by on both sides or dividing by negative numbers, you got to make sure you flip it. So if it's pointing left, you'll make it point right. If it's pointing right, you'll make it point left. Okay? So just to give you just a real, a real quick... Uh, look into this and then we'll get into doing some examples which by the way that is the answer um, to the very first question in your homework okay so even though I didn't pull that question number one but question number one in your homework says when do you switch the direction of the sign when solving an inequality problem well with inequalities if you multiply or divide right you're gonna write that down so I inadvertently do question one for you but it's because it's something you guys need to know so it's not like I'm just doing it because it's, it's, a, it's a normal thing that I have to teach you. All right, so let me show you what your problems are going to kind of look like. This is going to be super easy, this one that I'm about to do, so don't, don't think they're all going to be like this. I'm just trying to prove a real quick point, okay? So I'm going to put solve, and uh, I'm going to put like um, negative 3y is greater than or equal to 
nine, okay? Super simple. None of the problems that you have on your homework are this easy, okay? I just, I want to just show you what it's going to look like near the end, okay? Normally, the problem would have been a lot longer, and this is pretty much where maybe you get towards the end. So what do I do here in order to solve for y? Divide, right, by what? By negative 3. Now, notice how I'm dividing both sides by a negative number, right? So that means I'm going to write my answer, y, negative 3. But instead of greater than or equal to, it is now going to be less than or equal to. Okay? Then they're going to say, all right, now graph it. Okay, now graph this thing. So you're going to get a number line. Now, I do number lines the lazy way, but right now I'm going to do it the normal way. And I'll show you, you. You can do the lazy way if you want to on your homework, but they already have everything labeled for you, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, but I'm going to, I always like putting my answer right in the middle and then from there filling in whatever's missing. Uh, a couple to the left, a couple to the right. That's the way I usually do it. I don't start with zero all the time. I always put my solution in the middle and then just go two left and two right. Okay, since it says less than or equal to, what kind of dot should it be? A solid dot or an empty dot? It should be solid. So I'm going to put a solid dot right here. And then the arrow itself should tell you in which direction to go if your variable is on the left. So notice how my variable is on the left side. So if it's on the left side, that's considered the, the normal side. Um, then the arrow of the inequality tells me, and notice the arrow's pointing that way, right? Less than, so I'm going to go this way. Now, if the y value was on the, op the opposite side, on the right side, so if it's on the opposite side, you got to go the opposite way. Try to remember that. If it's on the opposite side, go the opposite way, all right? So if it pointed left, you go right. If it's pointing right, you go left. That's if your variable, if it looks something like this, right? So in this case, I would go right because X is on the opposite side. So it has to be going the opposite way. All right? If your variable is on the left side, that's the normal side, then just do whatever the arrow shows. If it's showing left, then you go left. If it's showing right, then you go right. Okay? So opposite side, opposite way. Just try to remember that. Okay? This is what you're going to be doing for homework. Okay, this type of stuff. But like I said, your homework problems don't look that simple. Let me do a, a couple of them, and then uh, we'll move on to the next section. Because literally, this section is really, really short. That's why we're kind of incorporating two of them together. So here's one of them. Um, we'll do this one. Negative 12 less than 5x plus 7 plus 6. And we're just solving and graphing. Okay, we're going to solve and graph. So you're going to want to combine any like terms that you may have. So I can see right there that I have a 7 plus 6 on the right side. I can add those together. That's going to give me a 13. So negative 12 less than 5x plus 13. And then I'm going to keep clearing out the right side. So uh, I see a positive 13 there hanging out by itself. Let's get rid of that. Okay. So I'm going to subtract 13 on both sides. You good? Yeah. Thank you. So this gives me negative 25 less than 5x. Okay. My last step, divide by 5. All right. So divide everything by 5. Notice, I am dividing a negative number, but I'm not dividing both sides by a negative, okay? So I don't have to flip any symbols. So this will be negative 5 less than x. You notice how the x is on the opposite side, right? So I'm not going to draw my arrow going left. It's going to go right, okay? It's on the opposite side, so I go the opposite way, all right? So let's draw um, my number line here. Again, on your homework, you already have a number line. You don't have to worry about drawing when you just got to draw your line. But I have to do one here because I don't have one pre-done. So I'm just kind of doing this really quick. Is this going to be a solid circle or an empty circle? Empty. This one's empty, right? And which way do I go? Right. The right, okay? Even though it's pointing left, but remember, X is on the opposite side, so go the opposite way. So, I mean, is this hard? Yeah. 
not too bad, right? You're just kind of solving and drawing and, and it doesn't require too much work. We're going to do one more and then I'm going to stop. That's going to leave you guys with uh, about, um, let's see, four, with five problems to do on your own, okay? Um, not too bad. And then we're going to go to the next section. So let me do one that's kind of on the tougher looking side. So number six looks like it's going to be um, tougher. I don't know if it is, but we'll check. So example number six, uh, it says uh, negative 40 minus 7n less than or equal negative 5 times 6 plus 3n minus 2n. Again, don't get intimidated by how long a problem looks. They all require you to multiply, add, subtract, multi uh, divide, stuff like that. It's not like the longer it is, the more math you have to know. It's still always the same steps, okay? Uh, that's one of the, the hard things to try to get students to snap out of. They always think math has to be hard, and it's like, no, it doesn't matter how long the problem is. It's still the same. Just take your time, okay? Don't, don't freak out. The biggest problem is people try to do too much at once, right? So small bites, that's what you want, okay? So um, in this case, uh, we're going to distribute first, okay? So let's go ahead and distribute... Uh, as my first step here, I'm going to distribute this. So I'm going to write negative 40 minus 7n less than or equal to negative 30 minus 15n um, minus 2n. All right, so, so far so good. I just did my multiplication. Everything's uh, looking correct. I'm going to combine my like terms on the right side, negative 15n minus 2n. Since they're the same sign, you're going to want to add them together and just keep it negative. So I'm going to write negative 40 minus 7n less than or equal to negative 30 minus 17n. Now, if you're like me, you, when it comes to the variables, you want to move the variable that has the smallest coefficient. I have a negative 7n and a negative 17n, the smaller one is negative 17n. Remember, with negative numbers, the bigger it looks, the smaller it is, right? So negative 17 is the smaller one, so I'm going to add it to both sides. So I have negative 40 plus 10n less than or equal to negative 30. All right, well, now I don't have any more n's to deal with, but I do have that negative 40 there to just kind of move to the other side. So we'll add it to both sides. And we get 10n is less than or equal to 10. If I divide both sides by 10, do I have to flip the sign? No. No, right, because I divided by a positive number, not by a negative number. So this is n less than or equal to 1. Notice my variables on the normal side, so I am going to follow the arrow. So which way am I going to draw it, left or right? Left. Left, right? I'm going left because it's pointing left. Okay, so here we go. So 1, 2, 3, 0, negative 1. So I'm going to draw a solid or empty circle here. This is a solid one, right? Because it's less than or equal to. And then I'm going to go to the left side. And that's it. So that's what section 2.2a is. Okay? Again, nothing crazy. Um, it, it's just you're solving inequalities. You just got to be careful when you divide by negatives or multiply both sides by negatives. You want to make sure that you're, you're flipping symbols if you have to. Okay? Um, and then they're going to want you to draw a picture, but drawing these graphs is simple. They're all horizontal. They're either going left or right from a specific place. The only thing you got to be careful with is, is a circle solid or is it going to be empty? Okay, and that depends on if it's a less than or a less than or equal to, right? Uh, that type of stuff. So, do um, you guys have any questions on these? Because we're done with that section. All right. So, 
The next section, uh, 2.2 B, compound inequalities, it looks like this. It's just one side. It's just one side. But about half of them are called or compound inequalities. The other ones are called and compound inequalities, okay? We're only going to do the or portion, all right? We're only going to do the or portion. So let me show you this one. I'll put it right here, or. And then on uh, Tuesday when we come back, uh, we'll do the and portion, okay? So when we're doing these, I know you guys are kind of writing that out. Go ahead, just kind of listen. When we're doing these problems, we're still going to solve. We're still going to draw graphs with number lines. But the thing is, there's always going to be two equations that you're trying to solve at once, and usually the there'll be two lines that you have to draw when you do these problems, okay? So it's kind of like doing two problems at the same time. So what we just did right now in 2.2a, they say, okay, double it up and, and do that, all right? So I think you have one, two, three, four four or problems, so I'll do two. You'll be able to do two of them. Um, when I give you this, there's 10 total problems, but you're only going to do, uh, I think, numbers one, one, four, five, and three. So one, three, four, and five. That's it. I'll, I'll remind you again. But you're only looking at those. Don't lose this because we'll use it on Tuesday to do the rest. Okay? Uh, well, maybe not the rest, but to do more from there. So here we go. So just really quick, An or problem, okay? I'm going to put right here. It usually says or in the problem. So it's not like it's hidden. They don't try to trick you by using a specific notation or anything like that. The problem will literally say this or that. So you'll know it's an or problem, okay? If it doesn't say that, usually it's an and problem. Okay, and we're not doing and problems, we're doing or problems today. Okay, um, arrows uh, that are drawn uh, go in opposite directions. So that's how you know if you're doing it right. One arrow will be going left, the other one will be going right. Or I guess left for you, right, this way, right? My left, your right. So that's how you know that you're drawing this correctly. You can always check your work usually by your picture. If your picture is kind of shooting off in opposite directions, that means you probably did it right, assuming you solved the, the actual numbers right. But if they're going in opposite directions, that usually means you did something right, if it's an or problem. When it's an and problem, they always crash towards each other, okay? They intersect. So, all right, now that we know that, um, let's try this example here. So they're going to ask us to solve and graph, okay? So solve and graph the solution. So solve and graph the solution. And here's the first problem n plus 8 is less than 6, or negative 6n is less than or equal to 6. So like I said, it's pretty obvious this is an or problem, right? It says or. Okay? So it's not like they're trying to be secretive about it. You're not trying to decipher code or anything. Like, it's pretty obvious. This is an or problem. Okay? And all we're going to do is solve both problems. So basically what we just did, but we're just going to do it twice, okay? Um, and then we're going to draw a picture with both answers in that picture. So let's start with the left side. I'm going to subtract 8 on both sides. So I get n less than negative 2. All right, perfect, no problem. Right side. The right side inequality, negative 6n less than or equal to 6. Well, to get n by itself, I got to divide by a negative 6, right? 
So is this correct? No. What's wrong with it? I didn't flip the symbol, right? If I divided both sides by a negative, I got to make sure that this symbol switches direction. Okay? All right, we're done. Now, draw your picture. Notice my answers are negative 1 and negative 2, so when I draw my graph, again, you guys will already have, I think, a number line provided, so you don't have to worry about doing this. But for me, uh, I do have to kind of draw it myself, so I'm just doing that really quick. Okay, I make sure both answers are obvious there. Okay, um, n less than negative 2. Less than means empty circle at negative 2. Since the n is on the left side, it's on the normal side. So since the, the little arrow points left, I'm going to go left. Okay, now I'm going to graph my other one. n greater than or equal to negative 1. So I'm going to go to negative 1. What kind of circle do I put for that one? A, a solid, a full one, right? And then notice the N is on the left side, so we call that the normal side. So that means look at the arrow that's there and follow it. So that's pointing to the right. So I'm going to go to the right, and you're done. That's it. I've always wondered, a lot of my, my students have always come in before, and they're like, oh, I hated doing these. And I'm like, why? Like, they're not... They're not crazy difficult. I'm like, what was it? And then they'd always say, well, it was the flipping. The flipping of the symbols, I forget. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I thought you just had a hard time drawing. I'm like, the drawing is usually pretty easy. But they're like, no, I would forget to flip the symbol. And then like both of my arrows were going in the same direction and I was confused. And, um, I'm like, okay, I get it. So don't forget about those uh, opposite, the, the dividing by negatives or multiplying both sides by negatives will flip symbols, okay? So I'm going to do one more for you guys. So this was, I guess you could consider it an easy one. There's actually an easier one, but I'm going to let you guys do that one. Um, and then let me give you one that I guess you can consider to be, oops, sorry. I got to learn to count. This would be example two. One that would be considered a tough one. Um, I mean, there's two of them. So I'll just do the this one right here. Negative 6x plus 6 greater than or equal to 66 uh, or uh, 10 minus 7x uh, less than negative 25. Again, it's an obviously, it's obvious that it's an or problem, right? It says or. So, um, like I said, the and problems will either say and, or it'll connect everything in one statement. And we'll see that on Tuesday, okay? So you'll be able to tell whether it's an and or an or problem. All right, so let's start with the left side. Uh, negative 6x plus 6 less, uh, sorry, greater than or equal to 66. I'm going to subtract 6 on both sides first, okay? Let's get rid of that addition of 6. Or let me change the color here. Uh, the addition of 6 is going to become subtraction on both sides. So negative 6x greater than or equal to uh, 60. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 6. But since I'm dividing both sides by a negative, don't forget to flip your symbol. So x is less than or equal to negative 10. All right. And uh, let's do the other side. 10 less than, sorry, 10 minus 7x less than negative 25. Okay, so 10 minus 7x less than negative 25. We're going to subtract 10 on both sides first. Minus 10, that gives me negative 7x less than negative 35. And now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 7. And since I'm dividing both sides by a negative, don't forget to flip your symbol. So x is greater than 5. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to make a number line, but going by 5s, okay? I don't want to do it by 1s or else this number line is going to be humongous. So, I mean, this is already going to be kind of long, but I'm just going to go 10, 5, 0, negative 5, negative 10, and uh, I guess I ran out of room, but it's okay. We can still draw it. All right, x less than or equal to negative 10, so less than or equal to the solid dot, okay? 
and I have to go towards the left hand side according to that. And then x greater than 5, well, greater than is an empty circle. And it tells me to go to the right. Remember, the reason why I go, the reason why I'm following the arrow is because they're on the left side. So if they're on the left side, you consider that normal. So the arrow tells you where to go. Okay, the less than says go left, the greater than says go right. Uh, if the x's were on the opposite side, make sure you go the opposite way. And uh, that's it. That's all I have to show you guys for today.